Sustainability, a favourite buzzword for corporations. Sustainability, sustainable. is your fashion sustainable? We hear it on TV, we read it in the news, and we see it on products everywhere we look. And like every good buzzword, sustainability features in shiny advertising campaigns. We associate it with the environment, climate change, and the vague notion of being green. But we rarely give thought to what it actually means. We're already knee deep in the greatest threat our species has ever faced. So is sustaining really enough? Or should we be focusing on actively improving the world around us? Although the concept of sustainability isn't new, the term itself is. It was only 35 years ago, in 1987, that it was formally defined in a United Nations report. In the late 80s, at 1987 to be exact, the Brundtland Commission issued the first formal definition of sustainable development. Sustainable development is development that meets the needs of the present, but without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Time is short for us to rectify the present unsustainable patterns of human development. It wasn't long until the term became a key piece of language in modern society. Fast forward 35 years, and we can find it stamped over all the products we buy. From food to clothes to cosmetics, almost every company dedicates a page on their website to gloat about their greenness. For me, the term sustainability has completely lost any meaning or any relevance. It's, it's uh, whenever I meet people who work in a company or an organization who say, but look, we've got a sustainability strategy. I'm like, we are so beyond you having a sustainability strategy now. This is a climate and ecological emergency. And what I want to see is your, shit, it's a climate emergency plan. The unfortunate truth is that what was once a strong, visionary, forward-thinking idea has become a go-to cliche for businesses feeling the pressure to answer to their customers' concerns. This type of deceit has a name, and you've probably heard it before, greenwashing. Greenwashing is a term that's used by companies when they want to make themselves appear more green and ethical than they really are. So they bring in some advertising company who help them to paint themselves as being super sustainable. Consumers are waking up to the importance of producing items in a way that is fundamentally sustainable, and brands are clocking onto this. But is the idea of being sustainable really enough? Imagine for a second an agricultural field that is struggling to produce food because it's been drained of all its nutrients. A sustainable approach might keep spraying it with synthetic fertilizer since the goal is to continue its production. But what about actually addressing the underlying issue and improving the health of the soil itself? There is a name for this and it's called regeneration. Regeneration is an idea that builds on the foundation given to us by sustainability and takes it to another level. This transition is clearly outlined in this diagram by Bill Reed. What's fascinating about Bill's diagram is that it shows that sustainability isn't an end goal, but simply a step in the right direction. Whilst we're making progress, we can go further still in developing restorative and ultimately regenerative cultures in which human beings remember that they are a part of nature and work actively to protect it. If you look at the concept rather than the term itself, it has such deep roots in many human traditions um, the world around, right? And is still very much observed by many indigenous cultures. For millennia, indigenous communities across the globe have lived regeneratively, fostering a reciprocal and loving relationship with Mother Earth. But only now are we starting to listen to the wisdom and guidance of these communities. And this is why it's so important to not position regenerative cultures as something utopian in the future, but as something that we've fallen away from and need to come back to, as something that is deeply in our DNA. We have been regenerative cultures, otherwise you and I would not sit here. This seems like a world far away from where we are today. How do we get there? The way I always like to explain to people is to say, imagine a mountain and that uh, over the last 150, 200 years in the global north, we've climbed up to the top of this mountain. 
And now we stand on top of this mountain and beneath our feet is more plastic, debt, inequality, carbon than we've ever stood on top of before. And the guides who are at our side who know this mountain really well are pointing and saying, we need to get down off this mountain really, really fast. For a lot of people, that doesn't seem to be working. So I wonder whether a better approach is to tell the stories of the lower valleys of that mountain and the delicious food and wine that waits for us down there, the comfortable mattresses, the warm fireside. Regeneration, of course, tries to heal the social, ecological and economic conditions in a place, but it actually does so by focusing on the uniqueness of the individuals, the collective and the place. Instead of thinking of ourselves as individuals, we need to think about change that encompasses us and the planet. In order to create resilience in the future, we have to completely transform the systems around us. I think so often um, there is this crisis of the imagination where we just assume that the current extractivist, industrialized capitalist models that we've inherited are the only way things can be. And that's simply not true. These systems have been designed <laughs> um, and they can be redesigned and rebuilt um, in a way that puts life at the center. Systems change can, can be sparked on a whole range of different levels. So of course we need businesses to do everything they can. We need insurance companies to say they're not going to insure oil and gas projects anymore. We need governments to have really ambitious decarbonisation plans. We need universities to teach all of their degrees through the lens of the climate and ecological emergency. We, you know, it had, this has to come from everywhere. Clearly, sustainability isn't enough. In order to protect life on Earth, we need to foster a regenerative approach to the way we live. And whilst transforming our current broken systems can seem like a daunting task, the alternatives are in front of us. And we've been practicing them long before we got into this mess. Right now, we're in the eye of the storm, but shelter and sunshine lies waiting in the lower valleys. It's time we got off this mountain. The breakdown was made possible by Waterbear, the first impact-driven streaming platform where you can watch hundreds of documentaries about the future of our planet and directly take action. It's completely free, so why not check it out?